everybody, Martin well, at Flicking Feathers again today. I'm tying a raghead crab. I've got to show you how to do it in two ways. Um, it's a very good pattern, right? Very popular in Mexico, Belize, but tied in different sizes and colours, it will travel to any flat really. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page. For anyone that wants to support the channel, get access to the monthly fly tying meetings that we do online, some members only content, and enter the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button, that's all, appreciate it. So I've got my hook and my vice, this is size 4, Gamma Katsu SL11, 3H. I'd say tie this maybe, it's maybe as small as a 6 and up to about a 1 0. Twos, ones, one o's, obviously depending where you're fishing it. Just run on some orange thread here. This is just Danville's three or and I'm attaching on this one some brass eyes. Um, use the size of eye that suits you where you're fishing, your casting ability. current, water depth, all that, have them in a range of sizes, right, brass, lead, tungsten, whatever you need. So I've got them tied on, and we've got a wee punch of a marabou, just again colour to suit, right, um, this is like kind of a grizzly dyed like a rusty orange, it's a wee bit washed out looking, but I quite like it for these. Um, shank length off the back. And you don't need too much. It can be quite a sparse clump. This is just a wee bit of chickaboo, actually. Get that in. Trim away the waist, the length of the body. And we'll get some crystal flash. A couple of bits lying on my desk. Two strands on my side. Fold it over. Two on the other. Just gather all that up and then tie over it. Cut the crystal flash so it's a wee bit longer than the marabou and you're ready for your claws. I'm using just a wee cheap Indian cock cape here. These are perfect for your crab claws. You absolutely don't want to buy expensive capes for these. And I'm taking similar feathers from either side of the cape so that the natural curves are opposing each other. So I'm going to tie them so they, they flare away but the curve is also going to be sort of sympathetic to the bend of the hook which means when the fly is resting this way the claw sticks up. And I'll just take my first one on your side and I'll tie it maybe twice the length of the marabou. No more than that, it can be a wee bit shorter, but twice the length of the marabou's. So I would say the limit starts to look a bit strange if you go further than that. Then I'll do my side, check the tips for even. And then secure it. Trim away the waist. And then cover all this up. Now this orange one has got to be brown and orange and it's going to have an exposed th thread on the top side so you want to make sure this is fairly tidy here. So I'm just going to go over it a couple of times letting the thread flatten and smooth everything out. This is a colour I like um, for Japan, 
uh, for Okinawa and that it's it's the, the sort of dark crab with the orange it works well on the volcanic rock and the broken coral triggers seem to like it right so I'm going to tie in my legs I'm going to get three strands of barred rubber and I would suggest that you use rubber not silly legs um, depending on the glue you're using it might react with the silicon but it doesn't seem to react with the rubber I've not found a glue that ruins the rubber in the same way as it ruins the silly leg I've got three here and I'm just going to figurate it in the midpoint of the shank nice loose wrap, should just the weight of the bobbin holder position it, make sure they're even close enough and then you can take a couple of wraps to tighten it and secure them in place now I'm going to separate the back legs I suppose they're actually the front of the crab, what would be the crab's face pull them back and then take a few wraps back with the thread and then again just cover up and then separate these two leave the middle leg just sort of figure eight your thread in between and again pull these forward take a few turns to get them in place I mean you don't need to be super fussy with how neat you get this but I like to leave it nice and clean pull them forward bring the thread to the front and I'll whip finish it here behind the dumbbell so I've got this now, I've got this I've got my crab basically ready to go and tie these up to this stage right it's actually better to have a few on the go I think um, you can set them aside when you're doing the bodies, give them a couple of minutes to dry start the next one pick up the first one and start shaping it I'm going to take a wee bunch of McFly foam and this is obviously brown and you don't need a ton like maybe about a centimetre in diameter 10 mil, half an inch, slightly less than half an inch, three eighths maybe. And I just pull off a full length because we'll be doing a few crabs. And then I'm going to cut about the width of my thumbnail. Like this. And then sort of stretch it out. And this is going to be my crab body. So look at this. I'm going to lay it across the shank. Right? So that the fibres of the McFly foam are perpendicular to the hook shank. Now, some people like to use like gel super glue or goo. I'm using a contact cement. Um, like a urethane based contact cement shoe goo works some people like zap gel I like the contact cement but whatever you whatever works for you so get that and then I'm just going to I've run a bead only basically the li on the thread wraps there and I'm just going to press this on just tap it and don't worry too much about the shape at this stage like this first piece it will 
soak in the material. If you want to, you can come in and knock any wee hard corners off. And just keep tapping it, press it in, and the glue will sort of start to so it's a wee bit of time to dry. And then you can come in a bit more of your cement. And this time I like to get it like a round, a wee bit wider blob. Same size bunch, put the width of my thumbnail, spread it out. Just tap it on. If you wet your finger, the glue will not stick to your finger. Just and then it's just a case of squeezing. You'll see the glue will start to let move out into the the edges. And you can start like, shaping the shaping your crab. And I don't mind like, I don't mind if the the glue sort of saturates the material and you can see a wee bit of the glue, I think that's perfectly fine. You need at least two on the underside. This one's getting three. Just because it I want a bit of, you want a bit of body to the crab. And you don't need to worry, this is non-buoyant, right? This is saturated in the glue, it's heavier than water, so it contributes to sinking the correct way up. And then, as I say, set that, you would set it aside and just gradually Shape your crab. Wet finger. Squeeze it. And as it starts to tighten up, You can sort of get a crabbier, like a slightly rounder, crabbier shape. And at the end, you can come in with your scissors, obviously, and sort of adjust the shape if you wish. And then I like to just come in on this side. Same glue. And this lets you set your leg position. Use a wet finger to spread it. And that will shrink as it dries. It's a useful skill to learn when to stop though. Um, you can overdo it. And I'll leave that at that, and that crab's fine. I'll set that aside to dry. The second type is the full body. And I've got ready to go here this. Um, I've basically tied it tied the tail, or the claws and everything, tidied, up, tidied everything up so it's ready to go and I'm going to attach my legs this way. So again three legs,
more glue. But I'm going to attach them on the inside of the gape. Again, you only need a wee figure eight, it's no critical. And then again, I'll whip finish on the inside so that that sticks nicely. I'll just separate my legs. I don't need to. I don't need to mess about tying. Tying the legs into position here. Tan this time. And again, same same size bunches. Just but the width of your thumbnail. Well. And obviously it will depend on the size of crab you're tying. Cut a few bits. Get your contact adhesive, put a wee bead on the, only on the thread. But make sure you drop it all the way to the back of the shank. And just same again, just stretch your fly foam just repeat and And then I'll just see how my legs are sitting, where they want to go. And then when I sandwich them with the next piece of McFly foam, that will sort of set the position. There's enough glue has seeped around here for this first piece, so I can just come in, push it on. And wet the fingers. Squeeze. And I always think these look quite messy when you're working with them, but they will come together. It just takes a bit of practice. Just pull your legs. Decide where they're going to go. Get a wee squeeze, a wee push. A little dot of glue on top. About my fly foam. And as I say, just squeeze till it starts to take the shape. You'll feel it all. The, the glue will start to like um, tighten up, it will get a bit stickier, plasticier. here. 
which is, I mean, normally, if you've got a couple of carbs in the go, you can set this one aside and have a wee pull at the, the body of the next one. Again, wet fingers means it doesn't stick to you. Keep shooting it. If you need to, which I do, I'm just going to come in and trim away. There's a few bits that are just there's maybe not quite enough glue to suck them in. Put the leg there. Got about on this side. And then the rest of what's there, I can wet my finger. Make a wee crab. Once it's completely dry, you might come in and get another wee trim, but essentially that's it done. That's your raghead crab. So when the crab's dry, right, you can come in, I like to leave them overnight really, and if there's any wee bits that are a bit too fuzzy or don't seem to be bonded in, you can just tidy it up. You don't, strictly speaking, need to do this, but uh, I prefer to. Just be careful of your legs, don't cut your legs. And then you're ready for your weed guard, if you want one. I always put one on, I can take it away, you know it can be removed on the water. It's much harder to tie one on when you're there, although it can be done. But So just start the same thread right in front of the dumbbell eye. Get myself some hard nylon, this is £20 because it's quite a heavy crab. This is, I mean, this colour of crab is more likely to be to protect against coral, so I want enough to turn the weight of the fly. Um, and no more, really, enough stiffness. So, make my wee V, take three wraps in front, three wraps behind, pull it down, turn that over, and then. In this case, I need to do this. I need to take a figure eight through, just to position it how I like, and then whip finish. And I'm only putting one on because it's not really part of the fly as such. Get the heavy scissors. Just in front of the hook point. And then a wee bit of head cement just to seal that quick finish there. And you're good to go. It's, I mean, if you're putting a wood guard on the other style, it's exactly the same. So there you go. That's the raghead crab. Hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Hit lens guys, bye.